All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about um, how to make a prediction based off of the probability, the theoretical probability of something. Um, so the first part here, it says predictions should always be based off of, just like I just said, the theoretical probability. Experimental probability, like we learned last class, really is only calculated when they ask for what is the experimental probability or what is the probability based off of the results or based off of the chart or table. Um, so really for predictions or what we expect, we know what we expect is theoretical probability. Experimental probability is what should happen. Um, so when we're asked to make a prediction about how many times an event will occur, we're going to use proportional reasoning. So we're still not getting away from those proportions. We're going to use that to make a prediction. So, for example, I just first want to know, on one spin, what is the probability of getting an elephant? So if you look here, you have one, two, three, four elephants and seven total animals. So we're still going to be doing um, the prediction based off of the theoretical probability, which would be how many elephants over how many total outcomes. So there's four elephants and there are seven outcomes. I know you probably can't see that picture very well on your um, paper, but you should be able to see it on the screen here. So that's, oh, that seven looks crazy. That's a seven. So let's go ahead and predict the number of times we're going to get an elephant if we spin it 210 times. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the number of elephants, I'm going to write E, over the number of outcomes like we just did, so that was 4 over 7. And then we're going to say, okay, well, we want to know how many times it's going to land on an elephant. Elephant is on the numerator. We don't know how many times. If we spin it, 210 times, so 210 possible outcomes. And there you have your proportion, okay? So the 4 over 7, I mean, I'm going to write over these words, is the theoretical. And then the x over 210, you don't need to write this, is... Um, the prediction. So we always have theoretical equals prediction. Now you can go ahead and cross multiply 4 times 210 and then divide by 7. And you should get 120 times. Okay, if you have any questions on that, just pause the video and, and uh, let me know. All right, so let's keep going to number one. We're going to do some application problems. Number one says, Ryan flips a coin 20 times, and it lands on heads five times and tails 15 times. So they're just telling us basically what the results were. If he flips that coin 100 times, what is the best prediction for the number of times that the coin will land tails up? All right, so we see the word prediction. And nowhere in that second sentence does it say based on the 20 flips that he already did or based on the results or based on the experimental probability. So you can just take your pencil and cross out it lands on heads five times and tails 20 times. That is information that is unnecessary to our question that we're being asked. Right? So we have to really um, dissect the, the words and the information to figure out what the question is really asking. So Ryan flips the coin 20 times. Um, and if he flips it 100 times, what's the best prediction for the number of times that the coin will land tails up? So we're going to do tails over outcomes. Okay, so we know that it could land on a tail. How many tails, how many possibilities on a coin? Well, one out of two to land on tails. And then we don't know how many times it's going to land on a tails, but we want to predict how many times if, it, if we do it 100 times. So then again, you'll go ahead and cross multiply 100 times 1. It'll be 100 equals 2 times x. It'll be 2x. We'll divide both sides by 2. And you should get 50 times. Okay, moving on. Number two, if we spin the spinner 300 times, how many times can we predict it would land on an even number? So again, predictions, we're going to be, what are we expecting? That's theoretical probability. So we have the number of even numbers over outcomes. That's outcomes. Let's see, there are two, four. There are two even numbers and there are four possible outcomes. We 
don't know how many times it's landing on an even number, but we know that we're spinning it 300 times, so 300 possible outcomes, right? On your own, go ahead and cross multiply 2 times 300 and divide by 4. If you need to pause the video to do that, you can. You should get x equals 150 times. Hopefully we're doing okay hanging in there still. We're going to go on to number three. I'm going to erase this up top. Just so it doesn't look too convoluted. All right, number three says if you toss a number, toss a die numbered one to six, 640 times, how many times do you expect it would land on an odd number? Okay, so we have our die and we're wondering how many odd numbers we have over outcomes. Well, on a die one through six, there's one, three, and five. So there's three odd numbers and there's six possible outcomes. We want to know how many times it's going to land on an odd number if we flip it 640 times. Okay, so you can go ahead and cross multiply 3 times 640 and then divide by 6. And hopefully you got 320 times that it would land on an odd number if we flipped it 640 times again this is not necessarily true this is um this would be like in a perfect world how many times it would land on that but we didn't actually do the experiment we don't actually know that for sure all right moving on to number four maya has a bag with three purple marbles and four blue marbles what is the best prediction for how many purple she will draw from the bag if she draws 280 times so we're, we're wondering about purple. What is the best prediction for purple? Again, a prediction is theoretical probability. So just reading that first sentence, what's the theoretical probability that she will pick a purple out of the bag? Well, there are three purple. I'm going to do purple over outcomes. There's three purple. And there's three plus four marbles in the back. So there's seven marbles total in the back. Then we're thinking, okay, now we're, what, are, what is our prediction? We want to know how many purple if she has 280 draws from the back. Okay, go ahead and cross multiply. And you should get 120 times that she would pull out a purple. All right, we got two left. Next one. So, number five, Fatima picked some apples at the orchard. For every eight apples she picked, one had a worm in it. How many apples can she predict, theoretical, to have worms if she picks 64 apples? So, we're thinking we want to know how many have worms. So, that's our desired or favorable outcome. Worms over just total apples or total outcomes. So for every one worm, one apple had one worm in it, there were eight apples. For every eight, one had a worm. But she's making a total of 64 apples. We want to predict how many had worms. So you will cross multiply. 64 times 1 is 64 equals 8x. Then we're dividing by 8. X should be... So if she picks 64 apples, eight of them will have worms in them. Gross. Okay, the last question, number six. You flip a coin ten times and it lands on heads once and tails nine times. If you think about that, for it to land on tails nine times, that's way, normally we would expect it to do 50-50, like five and five, but that's way higher. So the question is, which is closest to what you should expect if you flip the coin 200 times? So expect, again, that's theoretical in a perfect world. So we really can ignore his results or your results uh, from this first sentence. I'm just going to ignore that. Because it doesn't ask based on your rate or based on the experimental probability. So um, if we look at this, we are looking what is closest to what you should expect 
if you flipped a coin 200 times. So how many heads, basically, and how many tails should we expect? Well, we should do, it's always a 50-50 shot. So 1 over 2, 1 head or 1 tail over 2 outcomes equals x over 200. Okay? So basically, I'm just dividing 200 in half. So that would be 100 heads and 100 tails. That is, the, in a perfect world, if I flipped a coin 200 times, 100 times it would lay on heads, 100 times it would lay on tails. So you have to look at each of the um, solutions or the letter choices to figure out which one's closest to that. So I'll give you a second. Look, A, B, C, or D, which one has a prediction closest to 100 and 100? So hopefully by now you eliminated A, 10 and 190. You've eliminated B, 20 and 180. Those are really mimicking that first sentence that we don't need to know that. It's not based off of the theory or experimental probability. So then C is still 50 and 150. That's way uneven. D would be our best answer. 102 times and 90 times is closest to 100 and 100. That's closest to what we would expect if we flipped a coin 200 times. All right, I want you to go ahead and flip it over. On the back side, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven problems for you to do on your own, seven you try problems. Uh, if you need help, raise your hand. If you want them checked, raise your hand. All right, awesome job.